The first 200 days in this world were pretty good, but today we're going to crank up the pace and go full speed. It's time to get OP and that starts with farm week. So today I'm not going to build two, three, or even five farms, but over 10 incredible farms to take this world to another level, and many of those farms will be on or near this mushroom island. Our Asian city build requires way more blocks to build with, and I need fast ways to gather tens of thousands of materials, so I don't waste a lot of time waiting around. Let's talk about the main projects for today, and if we get through all of these, we'll just keep going until we hit day 300. I do want to stop uploading only 100 days updates in this world, but let's do it one more time. Let's start with a tree farm. Obviously we're going to need thousands of spruce, acacia, cherry, oak, and other logs to grow the world. And then next is a wither skeleton farm. Beacons can help you play faster and also stay safe. I have mending on all my gear, but no good XP farm yet, so a guardian farm will solve that problem. And while we're building the tree farm, we might as well build a quick nether plants farm. The fungi will act as a sapling for the nether trees later on. Similarly, while we're getting wither skulls from our wither skeleton farm, let's make it a goal to collect a full stack of beacons today. Killing withers also lets me quickly knock out a wither rose farm that we can use for black dye and kill chambers and other farms. Then I want three block generators. A fast cobblestone, stone, and basalt generator should help a lot. As promised, it's farm week. I'm excited to get into it, but before I do, I want to tell you about a challenge I'm going to set for you as well. This is our dragon egg, the only one in the world. But in the coming episodes, I'm going to create a gravity block duper to clone this dragon egg 100,000 times. With your support, we'll use these eggs to empty an ocean monument, and each new subscriber to the channel will add an egg to the monument drop zone. Once we reach 100,000 subscribers, we'll release all the eggs together, draining the water from the monument. But for today, this is our to-do list. I'm going to prepare shulkers for each build and get started. Feature right here, this is not our whole to-do list. I had a bit of time at the end, so we're going to also add a slime farm, lava farm, and a few small projects before this 100 days is up. A lot of today's farms are by Ian 4 so I'll link his channel in the description. Ian builds some amazing early game and even mid game farms. And when I start getting into later game builds, I'll have to go away from having a majority of Ian's farms, but for now, they're exactly what I need. The first farm I want to build is one of Ian's. His tree farm handles almost every type of tree in Minecraft, as well as both mushrooms and both nether trees. I don't have a lot of random stuff sitting around though, so whenever I need a specific item like Crimson Nylium, I just head into the nether and grab it, and I nab this advancement as well. That's the tree farm materials done, so let's just add them to the wall like this so I remember. Next I prepared the Wither Rose Farm. This is a simple enough little machine, but I did need to collect a couple stacks of pumpkins for snow golems. And while out searching for those, I stumbled over this jungle temple behind our woodland mansion. For some reason, my luck with these temples is awful. I almost always run into a creeper or two or a couple skeletons hiding in the lower level. Today I was lucky and saw no enemies at all though. The first chest rewarded me with two armor trims and some diamonds. Back at home now, and I also have this new snow golem friend. He's going to help us collect the four stacks of snow blocks I need for the Wither Rose Farm. I don't know if this counts as a snow farm, but maybe. A few redstone components later, and now we have our Wither Rose Farm ready to be built. I grabbed a lot of cobwebs here, but when I got to build the Wither Skeleton Farm, they were all gone, except one. I wish I knew how I lost those. Anyways, I ran into a trident throwing drowned and tried to get it off him, but he took it to his grave, so I'll have to do this again later. My distractions continued as I brushed the suspicious gravel and found some pottery sherds. And yes, no matter how many times you tell me, sherd sounds like the wrong word. I also saw this cool underwater lush cave and flew down in it. I'm glad I did. I was able to snag this yellow axolotl first, eventually. And then by flying straight up out of the cave and straight back down into it, I was able to collect the pink, brown, and light blue axolotl as well. And as I was leaving the area, I saw this drown stuck inside a building. I took his trident from him. Those are very productive distractions, but after bringing in our new friends home, it was time to finish this prep work. We have a lot to do today. So it was seagrass for turtle breeding, and then turtle eggs for the wither skeleton farm, a bit of obsidian for portals, and a makeshift enderman farm to repair tools, scaffolding for the guardian farm, etc, 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 blah, blah, blah. I collected, 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 collected. This is all 10 shulkers materials I need for every farm on our original to-do list. Let's build some farms. That'll be nether plants here, tree farm here, stone and cobble. Okay, officially farm number one is the Anexo4's versatile tree farm. I'm building a lot of these farms on this small mushroom island I found last episode because it's a safe place to run the farms without much harassment. You ready?
The tree farm is done and I need to keep moving. The nether plants farm design is by Nevermind Flame and is a very simple two-sided piston design with a dispenser under the farm bone milling the ground. In this case, the only two blocks we care about at bone milling will be a crimson and warped nylon block above, resulting in only nether plants being created. This is a very fast farm and produces nearly enough excess and waste materials to keep running indefinitely. Let's kickstart that. As you can see, this farm is very fast and very productive. We can compost the roots and keep more than a half stack of both crimson and warped fungi for our trees later. With both of those farms done, let's at least run the tree farm and test that out as well. Our bone meal is very close. We can just grab some of this, fly it back over, and then transform that into bone meal, which will go in the chest right here. One more trip to the mob farm and we can take some of the bone meal and put it in the nether plants chest as well. I chose cherry for the test because obviously living in a cherry biome means I'm going to want to use more of it, but also the rates for cherry are very good. So just for any wood block that we'll need for things like chests, this is a great way to go. This is the duper working up top and blowing up all the cherry trees at the bottom. It's not the most efficient on bone meal for cherry, but the rates are just really good. So we'll sacrifice a little bone meal for fast logs. Like with oak, you can sometimes take a little tick of damage with cherry though, which is scary. It doesn't hurt, but it's just enough to remind you that you're using a TNT duper, and if it goes wrong, you're back to punching trees on day one. Okay, let's finish up the test quick now. Three stacks of logs in about two minutes seems to be working pretty well. Next up is our stone generator. I know some people smelt cobble for their stone, but I don't have a mega smelter yet, and it feels like a waste of resources to smelt cobble when I can make almost as much stone just as fast with this small little machine. I'll definitely need a beacon to make this fast, but my plan is to get a whole stack of beacons today, so this'll work. This is a double generator, so once I have a beacon, I can clear out one side of my Efficiency 5 Silk Touch pick, and then the redstone will push me back over to the other side so I can clear that one out. Back and forth I'll go with lava and water remaking the stone and the machine itself doing all the work. The redstone itself is a very simple setup with a couple of repeaters spying alternating pistons to move me back and forth between those two lines of stone. With the generator already built, I need to position myself between the pistons and you can see how this will work. When I'm mining one line of stone, the other's being created with the lava and the water, then I get pushed back over to the other. That's three farms done and way more to go, so let's get into the cobblestone generator next. I'm going to keep this one super close to the tree farm and the stone generator, so that no matter which one of those two I'm running, I can always be running this cobblestone farm at the same time. This design is by Martin Demink and uses TNT timing to work. The waterlogged leaves and lava will form cobblestone, and that cobblestone will be blown up instantly by the TNT inside the blast chamber. Because everything is waterlogged, nothing gets destroyed except for the cobblestone, which is super handy. This cobblestone generator will produce up to 80,000 cobble per hour, which is insanely fast. There are faster machines, but none that are this cheap or easy to build. Okay, let's turn it on. Inside the blast chamber you can see what I was talking about. The cobble gets formed between the water and lava and is instantly destroyed. It then flows out of the blast chamber and into our collection system. Later in the series I plan to shulker load these, but right now I don't have enough spare shulkers and no shulker farm. So yeah, for now it just goes into these chests. Okay, moved everything out of the storage, let's run a quick proper test. This sounds so weird when you speed it up 1500%. Okay, a quick five minute test later, and we ended up with over 3,000 cobble in just the first three chests. The math checks out on the system, we're getting about 80,000 per hour. Before I leave the island, I thought I should run some oak through the tree farm and get a bit more wood. The island is looking much better from up here now. It's become our little industrial district with four very powerful, very fast farms all in one small area. Was four farms in 10 minutes fast enough for you? We're just getting started. I may or may not dislike doing the Guardian farm, but that's up next. I love the results, and this farm is one of the most over-the-top, fastest ways to get XP in all of Minecraft. But first I have to kill the Elder Guardians. It's hard to see what I'm doing here, but I'm placing TNT on the monument, a piece of sand on that, and then igniting the TNT. And of course, trying not to die. The sand will fall into the TNT, and that makes it do blast damage to the monument. I need three holes in the structure to get in and start killing the elders. One is always on the very top of the monument, while the other two are floating around in the left and right wings. I'm very glad now that I found this trident earlier. It was very helpful in getting started. However, without impaling, it's not very good at killing anything. Eventually, I knocked this top Elder Guardian completely through the wall, which was helpful. And once he was out, it only took about 87 more throws to kill him. Yep, we're gonna need impaling. 
Impaling five is one of the worst trades to have to roll for villagers in all of Minecraft. However, the trident already had loyalty, so I wasn't trying to re-roll it, and I only have one. Eventually, I did manage to get impaling, but it cost 64. After the time spent doing this, I'm going to enjoy making a zombie bite this guy later. The impaling does help, however. I killed the second Elder Guardian here quickly and moved on to the last. He was surrounded by bodyguards, so I did what you shouldn't spam so many doors that doors versus wheels debate is now over. It's doors. From my safe little corner back here, I was able to basically just play with this guy's feelings and smack him around a bit. In the end, the monument's now clear. Now it's time to build this farm and fight off guardians. The worst part of building this farm is easily the first 15 minutes. After that, you get a little platform, some blocks to move around on, and way easier ways of fighting off the guardians. Until then though, this is torturous. I did manage to get the corner set and a torch on the scaffolding that would signify that we've begun the farm. This farm works by putting our AFK spot in a position that's out of spawn range for most of the monument. We'll cover the rest in soul sand, creating bubble columns, and those bubbles will force the guardians up through the scaffolding where they'll bounce around into large nether portals. From there, they're transported to the nether for a 15 second cooldown period, at which point the gates open up and they're transported back to me at the overworld. They'll end up on top where I'll be standing near the kill chamber. One swing of my sword later and the process will repeat. Guardians drop nearly the biggest XP orbs behind the Ender Dragon, Wither, and Ravagers, with those three not easily farmable, and that makes this one of the fastest XP farms you can possibly make. Let's get into it. With the soul sand in place, the farm is now done. The guardians will mostly spawn in the soul sand area, get transported to the nether, then to me, and we'll see them come through above. Because the gate holds them back, they come through in these huge waves. Okay, this is the fun part now. Watch my XP level when I give them a bit of a smack. I'm gonna start on level 16. I swung one time. Don't forget that. It's still going. Yep, 28, 29, let's keep going. 30, yep. It's still going. Remember, I swung one time. And 34. There we go. Okay, let's go again. Load them in. Take them out. Now that I have the farm, it's easy to forget the pain of building it. Let's use it just a little bit and forget a little bit more. Okay, that was great. Yes, I see my level. Don't at me. I think we can safely move on to the next farm. Before we do the next dangerous thing, which is the Wither Skeleton Farm, let's do the safe and easy thing, which is a quick basalt generator. I'm making this in the nether because lava flows faster here, so this farm works faster in the nether than in the overworld. 
This farm is very similar to the stone generator in that I'm creating two sides and I can easily mine both quickly once I get a beacon set up here. While a really fast TNT basalt farm can produce upwards of 70 or 80,000 basalt per hour, this small and way easier to build version produces nearly 50,000. That's likely more than I'll ever need. And because I know some of you are wondering, this black texture is my bedrock ceiling and I'm using vanilla tweaks as my texture pack. I'm setting this up close to my home portal as it's not location based and we can use it whenever we need. The hopper minecarts here will get buried in soul soil and then one lava bucket on each side and then blue ice on top will finish our generation chambers. The lava flows out and as it tries to flow between the soul soil and blue ice, it'll create basalt. Then similar to before, I can just place myself up against this and mine out all the basalt that I want. This would work with the piston pusher on both sides like the stone generator. I may add that later. After digging some very long tunnels, I found an escape from my basalt delta here, over 300 blocks from spawn. And with this freedom, it's time to find a suitable fortress for our wither skeleton farm. I also found this bastion, but I'm not dealing with that today. I'll watch this smooth kill. I like that, that was nice. Okay, let's see what we have in our nether. No, 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 definitely no, no, close. This is the best we have, I think. It's not the perfect spot, but it's gonna have to do. I've been all over my nether and I can't find a better spot. It's not 100 blocks from any other biome, but it's close. And if I use this high middle area, I should have a fairly decent time building it. My plan is just to get myself to the roof, break a hole, and use this to get back and forth. As you probably know by now, I don't like the lower nether very much, and the less time I can spend here, the better. I use the same bedrock breaker here that I did when we originally came to the roof. It's simple, I trust it, and it hasn't blown me up yet. The one thing that wasn't yet in my shulkers for this farm was nether bricks. I always assume I'll get it from tearing down a piece of the fortress I use, but in this case, that's not an option. I'm using almost the highest part of the fortress in a very closed in area, and it wasn't a great idea to stay there any longer than necessary. So I mined a bunch of netherrack, smelted it with lava, and tried to get as much as I could that way. However, that's slow, very, very slow. In the end, I went back to the original fortress and spent a fair amount of time clearing all the bricks I could gather. That was faster, still tedious, but in the end, a combination of both methods got me all the bricks I needed. And we're back. Okay, I love ENX04's Wither Skeleton Farm. I really do. It requires no spawn proofing, it can be completed pretty quickly, and within reason it's not overly difficult to do. However, the nether is my weakness in Minecraft. I hate being here. Most of my deaths in Minecraft have come in the nether. My last hardcore death was in the nether. I rarely die in the end. I rarely die in the overworld. So despite how amazing this farm is, I really don't like building it. This is also one of the very few farms that I'll make in the entire series that has to be built below the nether roof. So once we're finished with this, I'm only coming back for bastions, fortress raiding, and netherite mining. I'm aware my chests are in the wrong spot, by the way. I'll fix it later. Let's get this done.
So yeah, somehow I lost the cobwebs I had earlier. I needed to use this nearby mesa and desert to get more. And along the way I found this really cool pond and had to grab some coordinates for that. I could see coming back to this later. Distraction aside, finding cobwebs in a mesa is a fairly simple thing, so I grabbed a bunch more and headed back to finish up the Wither Skeleton farm. Those go here, here, and here, and then we're back. And on the nether side, we're basically done. I changed out Ian's design here for an iron door, because this is hardcore, and I don't want an angry piglin knocking down that wood one. And now we just wait. And once we see that first Wither Skeleton come through, we know the farm is working. This obviously isn't the world's fastest Wither Skeleton farm, but it does the job and it allows me to safely get skulls. I also used it to repair my tools, get some coal and bones for other projects, and from the replay file you can see what's happening below. Blazes, wither skeletons, and zombified piglins spawn on the fortress area that I built. The blazes just kind of sit there, the zombified piglins run to the turtle eggs in the corners, and the wither skeletons attempt to fight the iron golem, and they run through the nether portal. That sends them to the overworld bridge, and then entity cramming pushes them down the ramp until they come through the other portal and back up to me where I can kill them. After just a little while, there's our first stack of the skulls, and another modification I made to this farm is to add an armor stand into the corner of the kill chamber. This means all I have to do is aim at that, swing at that, and hit everything in the kill chamber at once. It's a really simple fix and makes actually hitting them with the skeletons much simpler and more consistent. And now I have three stacks of skulls, which is what I needed. Before leaving the nether, I dropped down our new bedrock hole and collected some soul sand to make the wither bodies. I need four stacks of soul sand just for withers, Then I wanted a little bit extra for bubble columns and other projects. This is one of the most fun parts of today's work. I'm going to build a wither rose farm, get 10 stacks of wither roses to start, and then we're going to kill 63 more withers and collect a full stack of nether stars and make that into a full stack of beacons. The Wither Rose farm, like many of today's projects, was designed by Enix04. In the old days of Minecraft, you'd use a dispenser to fire a few chests of eggs into a kill chamber, poison the chickens down to a half heart of health, and then summon the wither. His explosion would kill them all, and give you the roses, but it was time consuming, expensive, boring, and not much fun. In Solution uses sheared snow golems to give the withers infinite targets to kill for some roses. The snow and pumpkins are both recycled, and as long as the wither is occasionally killing something, it won't suffocate in the end portal. You can do this indefinitely, and with other people helping, I've done more than two shulkers of roses at once before. I can come back and do the skin later, so for today I just collected ten stacks. That's still a fair few. For a farm I'll make soon, we'll need at least one and a half stacks, and this gives me black dye as well. Once I collect the roses, I can kill this wither off, and while doing so I realize that my sharpness sword really stinks for killing withers. It's time to grind. Build the wither, wait for the explosion, come back in and kill it. Sharpness is painfully slow with this. Okay, I'll be right back. So after buying an enchanted diamond sword, I immediately disenchanted it. But then I bought Sweeping Edge, Looting 3, Unbreaking 3, Smite 5, and Mending. All of our Wither Skeleton Killing has me over level 100, so I think I'll be fine to just do this here. Perfect, I'm back to level 63, but we have a much better Smite 5 sword now. Let's kill some stuff. Sixty-four withers down, sixty-four nether stars, and sixty-four beacons that need to be crafted. I don't think I've ever had a whole stack of beacons in hardcore. Before leaving the end, I mined some extra obsidian for those beacons, and this is where we're at. The sixty-four beacons were the last thing on our list, so let's craft those up now. I have all the materials. We can do that just like that. This is indeed a lot of beacons. And no, I don't know why I like throwing things around so much. Okay, let's update our to-do list. That's done. 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 Done, done, and done, 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 and done. And of course we needed a couple of those beacons immediately. One was for the stone generator here. Let's get haste two on this and I'll run the cobble farm while we mine a little bit of stone so I can properly show you how this works. Haste two is an amazing thing. This farm is incredible and we can push F3 and T to do it hands free. Using this while running the cobblestone farm is very overpowered. Either one by itself is pretty great, but together they make over 130,000 building blocks per hour. And it was back to the guardian farm for a little bit of tool repair, elytra repair, and let's hit this for a little while. I'm now 270 days into the world. I completed all the projects on our to-do list, but I really wanted to see how far I could get by day 300 in this episode, so I've decided to keep going. I saw a really great slime farm design on an MD video, and when I tested it in creative, the rates were way better than advertised. I figured we need slime for things like the raid farm, lots of redstone projects, and I really hate collecting it by hand, so why not put together this farm and see how we go? Before the 300 days is up, I'm also going to attempt to complete a small lava farm, cocoa bean farm, nano crop farm, and reach level 100 again. This farm is by Sane Dragon and is meant to produce 7,000 slime balls per hour on average, and 12,000 on a full moon. 
with basically zero digging except the collection area. No slime chunks, no perimeters, just a good sized section of flat swamp, a couple of spawn platforms full of mushrooms, and a very large roof that I believe carries most of the farm's efficiency as this farm is very intense. This design is very similar to Il Mango's mushroom based farm and doesn't use looting like Enix of Boar's farm, but the rates of this farm absolutely destroy those two farms. In fact, after seeing this farm work, in my opinion, slime chunk and dig based farms are dead to me. I've talked it up enough, let's get this built. On the first night I found some areas to spawn proof and saw lots of mobs spawning around the farm. So I lit up some areas and cleared away the land where I could and the rates noticeably improved. When I say noticeably, I've never seen a single dimension slime farm go this hard. The next night I collected hundreds of slime in just 10 minutes. Then I properly AFK'd the farm. Here, let me turn the lights on for you. Have you ever seen a simple farm do anything like this? I collected more than a double chest in under 15 minutes. That's way more than the 12,000 and it wasn't even a full moon night. 17,000 is more than double the expected output. So I checked to getting creative on a new instance, had a friend test as well. 120's broken slime farm somehow. Well, I'm not telling anyone. The next farm on my list is a very small, very easy farm to build and run. It's a nano crop farm and while it may look silly, small and worthless, let me explain. This nano crop farm will allow me to farm wheat, wheat seeds, carrots, and potatoes, very, very quickly producing thousands of any of those crops per hour. Let's turn it on and I'll show you how it works. The dispensers are constantly bone milling the ground, but only use up bone meal when there's a plant there. When the piston's extended, the light level goes up and allows me to plant a carrot. When the piston retracts, the light level hits zero, so the crop pops off, but not before it's bone mealed a bunch of times, so it's instantly grown. My tools are looking kind of worn out now. Boy, I'm glad we have this farm right here to help with this now. At the end of a guardian killing session, I usually leave some extra XP behind. It won't despawn, so I can often fully repair without killing a single guardian, although here they come now. You remember when I was on level 100 before I made that smite sword? I liked that. Let's do that again. Should I leave us on 99? Nah. With that done, I went back to my stronghold, unblocked the door, and found the library. I picked up a few armor trims in here. I think they're 100% guaranteed. Anyways, I turned the corner to head back the other way and found another library and two more trims. I know I already showed the egg back at home as a spoiler earlier, but while I was in the stronghold I decided to go home using the end portal, saw the egg. That's when I decided on our plan, so remember, for every subscriber this channel gets, I'm going to be adding one egg to a drop zone above an ocean monument. When we get to 100,000, I'm dropping all the eggs at once onto the monument, which will drain all the water, and then we're going to do a really fast OP guardian farm and a crazy build. I can't believe it's not day 300 yet. Let's do two more farms and get out of here. This next project is one people love to hate, but I love to love it. It's a lava farm, which is the base of my lava powered super smelter. You can check out that tutorial, it's on my channel. Anyways, people hate this because you can just go to the nether for lava. That's true, but it's a waste of time and it's way more dangerous than it has to be. This farm will fill up while I'm doing other projects. Need cobblestone? Collect 50 lava buckets. Need stone? Collect 50 lava buckets. It's really just that easy and you can collect a double chest in under a minute. No fire res, no nether, no spamming buckets into a lava lake. And lava's super useful. It's great smelter fuel. It's part of half the farms we built today, including the stone, cobblestone, and basalt generator. We need lava for future farms as well. And it's renewable, unlike this lava lake or the ones in the nether. So whether you love this or not, I'm gonna always have a lava farm in my hardcore world. It's okay to be wrong if you don't like it though. Once each dripstone has a lava source above it, we can turn it on and collect what we've accumulated just by building the farm. The way the redstone works is simple. A bucket goes into the hopper and activates the comparator. That fires the dropper to my right, which spits out a new bucket. So I'll constantly have the same number of buckets no matter how much lava I collect. Okay, on to the last farm for today, I think. This is a cocoa bean farm. I'm starting to think about dyes and colors we'll need. I'm going to use plenty of woods and wood types in our Asian city at spawn. So brown is one of those colors. I was lucky enough to run across this exceptional cocoa bean farm by Etho. It produces over 20,000 cocoa beans per hour. I have no idea what I would do with 20,000 cocoa beans. So let's just say it produces enough for forever. It does use up bone meal as well, so this will need a proper source of bone meal before this series is done. The mob farm is okay, but it's not this good. A single minute later, I have almost 400 beans. Yep, that works. To finish up today, I put a nether portal on the roof for the mushroom island so we can get back and forth quickly. I added the beacon to the basalt farm as well and ran that. It produces so much basalt and I only have a double chest on this for now, so I don't want to go overboard. And after quickly repairing my bow, I was finally done. That was a tree, stone, cobble, basalt, guardian, wither skelly, wither rose, slime, nano crop farm, lava, and cocoa bean farm, axolotls, trident, 10 stacks of roses, 64 beacons, level 100 twice, and new armor trims in one episode. I'm tired now. Goodbye.